Let's bring in TK. What's Mr. Up? Crick. He checked by. TK. Pod. What do you think? Of, what, what, what do you, like your hair today, TK. What, Thank you. We asked a, a, an uncomfortable question about not not the not like the ones that you normally <laughs> ask, just like a basketball <laughs> one. Um, what if the money that the Kings have, which we believe is about $17 million, isn't enough to compete with another offer for Malik Monk? Like, what do you think? What 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 do you think Malik will earn this off season, or could earn this off season in the open 20. market? That's kind of that's kind of where we're at, and that's that's a number where I feel like Malik, he might be willing to stay in Sacramento for that. Like, all right, it's a seventeen and some change to twenty difference. I'm staying. I'm staying here. It's when you start to get into the twenty twos or 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 twenty threes that I start to get a little nervous because the total value starts to become like 17 to $20 million difference between what Sacramento can offer and a competing team. Well, and then you think about maybe this place that would offer it, right? There's a few states where that changes very meaningfully because we know sure. that California is the highest tax rate state in the country. And then you've got places like Texas and Florida for a team like, I don't know, the Houston Rockets or the Dallas Mavericks or the Miami Heat or the – Probably don't not, you can take Orlando out of that because I don't oh, think no, we, we've been we've been talking about Orlando. Orlando's yeah. gonna have fifty million dollars in cap space. Do they need another guard? How many do they need? They're going after Brogdon. They've got Suggs. They've got uh, Mark Fultz. They've got K Caleb Houston. He's not a point guard, but you've got a, a bevy of them. I know I'm missing some. Oh, uh, you got Anthony Black. You yeah. got. There's another one, isn't it? There's another one that I'm missing. Well, Cole Anthony's there. And Cole, Cole Anthony. Cole. There's like five of them. But he's better than all of them, I think. You think and Malik be like, is the best of all of those? Yeah, and I think they will look at it like – they might keep Suggs because he defends at a high level, but they'd be like, let's move on from all these guys, bring Malik in. and get." They some like having players. all that depth, though. I know that they like having all that depth. And I guess it's all about role, too. Like, is, is Malik cool with the role that he has? Does he want to be a firm starter, not just got a guy that comes in and out of the starting lineup or is a, you know, the microwave that he is? And I think that the personal element of it matters too, right? You not just the taxes and the money, but happiness. And I think he's found a home and found a team that believes in who he is and doesn't want to change him, doesn't want to try to quote unquote rehabilitate him like I think the Lakers did. Right. They want to bring him out of the dregs of Charlotte and show the world what he can be. Like we see what he is. And I think Sacramento fans love him. But then you got your your boy, your guy in, in De'Aaron Fox. So I think that matters too in the environment, Mike Brown. All of that I think plays a role. And like, when's the last time that you could say that truly about Sacramento? That all of those intangibles matter more than the money. Mm. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, in a minute, I twenty years, <laughs> it's, it's seventeen years, something like that. Um, did you follow the King Siakam situation from? Oh yeah, last Friday the <laughs> the grand opening, grand closing of Club Siakam in Sacramento. I mean, Siakam, let's be real. I'm done. I'm done with his bull. You know what I mean? Like he's he's on some other stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's. They, they were given OG a hard time about him being a quote-unquote diva, which he is not. And I think Siakam is a little bit of a diva. I think he wants to – have you ever met those people who have been – they've been in a relationship since high school, you know, and maybe the girl or guy that they were with is good or bad. doesn't matter. They just want to know what it feels like to be single in the prime of your life and desired, right? They want to – it doesn't – how good the thing that they could be in is I'm I'm testing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna sow my wild oats. That's Siakam. It's like, baby, do you know who you are right now? Like you're not that guy at all. You don't need to be telling Sacramento, I'm not gonna resign with you. I'm gonna test the market. I'm not gonna. Okay, dude. You're just gonna end up staying in Toronto or going to another place that's even worse. The whole thing, and like I'm done with Masai too. I, I almost said something that I would only say off, off uh, into the group chat. Oh oh. Just the umbrella of it all. And you can just, the umbrella of it all, of like that these dudes over here have the same mentality, which is to scam you. 
They're like <laughs> straight Nigerian prince behavior to straight scam. And it's like, Masai, we're not giving you Keegan. No. What are you talking mm. about? Mm. Let me ask you this about Pascal, though. What? And I don't know this to be true. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to read the tea leaves. What if he doesn't want to leave? If what he really wants is for Toronto to pay him. And through all this, Toronto's trying to trade him, all this other stuff. He's like, I don't want to leave. I'm not going to make it easy for you to trade me. I've heard that. But then I know I've talked to Samson Folk, who covers the Raptors, you know, like I think for the Toronto Star. And he said that that's not necessarily the case, mm. that there's not really – a lot of love between that franchise and him. And maybe he likes the city, but the way that Masai has prioritized players, he's prioritized OG over Pascal. And maybe that's monetary because OG was on such a team friendly deal and he did so many things, but like Pascal is a roller coaster ride. He needs the ball in his hands at all times. He could never be in the role that OG was in where he's off ball, just kind of like, cutting and waiting for the flow of the offense to dictate to him when he's not involved in the offense directly. He's just, he's just not really there. And I, I, I don't see it. I don't see that he's got like this romance and he wants to stay with his long-term girlfriend. I don't, I don't see that at all. You're listening to Dilo and Casey on KIFM West Sacramento, 98.5 FM Carex QHD2 Sacramento ESPN 1320. Always live on the free Odyssey app, live on 1320 TV, uh, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter as well. Trista Crick, host of the Heat Check podcast, joining us here. So ultimately, do you think that Toronto and Sacramento wind up back at the table together? Candlelight, candlelight dinner with some roses on the... They're going to spin the block. You know, I mean, I think in general, if Siakam tells you I'm not re-signing in Sacramento no matter what, or if he tell his agents tell Monty, what do you do? You're just gonna just gonna roll the dice and see if he likes it there. I and think just that's trade, what you do. trade <laughs> you do. And you're getting HB off the books and you say, Well, at least we'll have cap space next I'm only summer. trading Harrison if he loves Canada. Yeah, the Harrison. I'm going to make sure Harrison do whatever is happy, Harrison no wants what. to do. Okay. <laughs> this make, is your team now, buddy. I'm make do what you make want. Make sure Harrison to do. is happy. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a certain point where I take the risk. Like Monty's take the, 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 the Tyrese Domas trade was a risk. It's worked out really well for Sacramento. I'm, I might, you know, roll the dice, certainly, you know, a different set of dice in this conversation. <laughs> I might roll the dice again and 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 take a risk to see if I can get him to come here. He'd be really good there. It's a it's and if you could get away with not trading any of the young guns and just trade HB and whatever filler that you're gonna have to, and maybe like a pick. I don't even know what the package was was supposed to be, but uh, HB I know is at the center of it, and I think Sacramento fans are ready for him to be gone anyway. I think this year and the playoffs last year pretty much sealed the deal and herders there might herders be more frustrating yeah there yeah. might be more frustration with kevin herder right now than yeah harrison barnes but i had higher hopes for kevin herder yeah. me too 12 months ago i had just come out there and herder was a microwave from three and we mm -hmm. we saw them play the lakers and it was just this insanely electric environment inside of there and then everybody loves red velvet and cave on and it's like no he's kevin he's back to being kevin <laughs> sorry I, yeah i don't I, think I, we've I wonder, seen, seen that we haven't seen Kevon all year yeah I, I was just gonna say i wonder what what's going on you know what i mean like what's obviously to me it's not a skill thing with him like he's a skilled ball player it's it's a confidence thing and what is it going to take to get him to feel good about himself and feel confident about his game and his shot. Cause I feel like they tried everything. They, they threatened his minutes. They've taken him out of the starting lineup. He's focused on defense, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And he just can't get right. I, I don't know what it is. What, what, uh, what hurt her at this point. Yeah. And, and confidence in the mental side of things in any field is really tough to get over. Right. It's, you don't know what's going to be able with the carrot or the stick or some combination of both or him getting Zen, him getting off the internet. Probably the things that Kings fans say about him doesn't help. Uh, I know that. 
I, we want to be honest and he's not been good. And, you know, the reporting has been not critical. That's and been you unfair. Gotta, you gotta like, be he's tough. Been trash. Yeah. Right. yeah. You gotta Got be tougher. Than that. Like that's, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, but yeah. he is in a, 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 a form of business where he will be openly criticized by people who can't do his job. It's mm -hmm. just, it is what it is. Any Part public profession you have your job, our job, it's the, it's, it's the same thing on a smaller level, but it's the same thing. You just have to deal with it. Har Harrison's got to deal with it. He's done a great job of it throughout the years. Cause he's had to deal with it a lot. Right. Kevin Herter's got to do the same thing. Right. Maybe he needs to leave it at, at the office. Like De'Aaron does. <laughs> right. <laughs> De'Aaron just needs to, you know, De'Aaron just goes home and has dinner with his family. Maybe, maybe that's all Kevin Herter. Needs. The people though that can do that, I envy them. The ones who don't like they can be at dinner and just not think about whatever is plaguing them or whatever professional hurdles or stumbling blocks they're dealing with. They can just like shut it off. I'm just mm -hmm. I walk in the practice facility, shut back on. Just make little to-do notes and I just check out my to-do list and I'm like, okay, back to where we started. Those people are so impressive. People are like, yeah, I don't care what people say about me. Of course, they're going to say these things. Like, it's obviously not true. And I just move on. Just continue to do my job. Like LeBron, think about this. LeBron James can't do that. LeBron James is, is the peak of excellence. And even that guy worries about what people say about him. Who do you think is the best at that in the NBA right now? In the NBA. First person that came to my mind was James Harden. I don't think James Harden cares at all what people are saying. I think he does. I think he says he doesn't, but I, I think he does. This is the man who IG story to fat suit. Like, he knows what he, he I think. Yeah, he's he kind of laughed at it, though. I think <laughs> like, probably he, he said, like, that's what I'm about to do, guys. Like, he kind of made a joke of it. Like, I don't think he can. He care about his money. In, in his no, playing team. Harden's That's a very players. sensitive dude. Harden, Harden is is maybe one of the more low key. You think about where he came up, right? You had to go to Arizona State. He wasn't this like top top AAU pick pros prospect. He's yeah. always felt you know six man coming off the bench wanted his money in Houston, right? From what I understand from people who have been around him, worked on his skills like skills development stuff with him. He's he's very aware of how people perceive him. Somebody said they oh, you know who it is? What? You know who it is? It's Russ. Russ. Russell Westbrook. Yeah. No, because no, it's not Russ. Yes, it is. Because Russ will go fight somebody for saying something yeah, wrong. Yeah, he'll he, yeah, yeah, but so then Russ but, but, but he'll fight someone at the arena. <laughs> all those wins, clippers, done, but... all those clippers are a little like Paul George, no, no, Russ, Russ, Harden. I don't know. I think like a like probably a Giannis feels very down to earth when it comes to like what people are saying. I think he feels the emotions that we all feel, which is that the bucks are terrible right now, but I don't think mm. like people are getting into his head where he's worried about that. Just I bet you Kobe that. didn't care. He's like, I just, I go to yeah, jo yeah, my yeah. job and I get yeah. better every day. Like these people are sheep. They have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> like, I'm just going to do me. You have, like, he's at just like at such an elevated mental level above everyone else. You yeah. know them when you see them, too. They just feel at peace whenever you meet them. You're like, you're way too calm. I, Fox I, is that. that we, that's how we started talking about yeah. this. That's how De'Aaron Fox is. I don't think Fox care about any of this mm -mm. stuff. Nope. And, <laughs> oh, and it's, you know who's, oh, we didn't even mention Jokic. No, oh, Jokic! Jokic! Don't I don't even up. think Jokic knows we talk about him. I don't think right? Jokic doesn't know hoops hype exists or the athletic is it. He ain't never listened to a radio show or a podcast in his life. He's he live streaming his horse cam and keeping it moving. He literally hoops and then goes home, plays with his kid, <laughs> hangs out with his wifey, and then gets up and goes to the facility. Like I would be surprised if he has any social media apps downloaded to his phone. No chance. Yeah. No chance. You don't care. Um, I love that you, you mentioned Kobe. It's such like an elite, elevated mental mentality. And people think, oh, we're going to Mamba mentality. Baby. Yeah, you can't do that. 
<laughs> you're not built for Mamba mentality. That's what people forget with that whole line, especially because it's 2024 and this is the Mamba year. We're going to be locked in. And it's like, yeah, that would be great if you had Kobe Bryant's line of thinking, but you don't. You have yours. You have your line of thinking. You don't have Kobe's line of thinking, so you can't do Mamba mentality. It's not a it's not a tagline. It was literally how that dude you lived. Can. I don't think you can. You it's can. literally a way of thinking. Yeah, you can. It's not. I don't think you. It's can. not that complex. I, really, really, what what the Mamba mentality name is. someone else who did it? Barry Vons. Really, what Mamba mentality is is I don't. Here's what we talked about. I don't care if I'm liked, if I have friends, if I have fun. The only thing that's fun for me is success. That's the Mamba mentality. And that's a unique mentality. I, I, no, not everybody can do it. No, I under, I agree with you, but it's not it's not one of one. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying people using the Mamba year as a tagline, like, <laughs> I'm going to do this. It's like, okay. It's like, be what's, your best you in your Mamba yeah, year. Like, what stopped you from doing that in 2023? <laughs> Because it wasn't 2024. What stopped you from doing that in 2021? I've got my Christmas Grinch Kobe's on, and I'm ready for my oh, Mamba yeah. year. <laughs> it's you like, mentioned you can barely take the trash out, dog. Like you, <laughs> you need to get an, a like a day planner. You don't know how to live that Kobe life. The <laughs> amount of precision. You know who's really good at it? I'm sure based on what I know, and I don't know him at all personally, but that guy, Rob Deerdeck from the fun, like he had the playhouse. It was Rob and big. You guys yeah. remember him? Rob yeah, and he's big. Ridiculousness every day. Or he, every organizes, he organizes his life in like 15 minute increments mm. and has them all like lined up in a grid. And as soon as that thing's, as soon as that time slot is done, he's moved on to the next thing. And he found a way to like optimize that level of optimization, I'm sure, is highly effective. But you've got – you're talking about 15-minute increments for just, like, everything? Okay, I guys, sorry. I know this hit was – I know we're doing well, but it's five. It's 5.15 on the nose. Got to gotta log off. That yeah. seems that seems stressful. There's, I, that seems How do I stressful. organize my life in 15-minute increments when I spend nine hours a day with him? <laughs> That seems strange. my whole day is blocked off Monday through Friday with Kenny. That de that doesn't seem like a fun life. Now he's a, he's very rich. I'm sure he's having a good. But that just seems stressful. But neither is Mamba mentality. Let's be honest. Mamba mentality is a form of psychosis. Let's be yeah. real. It that's is. what I'm saying. Like him, Barry Bonds, Tiger Woods, Boyd. It's kind of like that. You ain't got no friends. You don't Tiger have no real real grasp on life on living. Not not life, but living. Because you're just unbelievably laser focused on Tom Brady is like that. You just, I don't care about my family. I don't care about my family. I have to pay till yeah. 45. These people are not real human beings, right? Like they're just not the, the mama mentality is very different than Jokic. I think it's actually, you go around a circle and they meet Jokic is so far into the like work life balance. Basketball mm -hmm. is just one piece of my life. And it's a small one. It's like 15% of the things that I think about on a daily basis. And when I finish, I don't think about it. And then you've got all I focus on is basketball. These other people talking about me, they don't matter because all that matters is these 250 middies I have to put up. And you know what the funny part about that is? The life that we all should be striving to live is the Jokic life. Jokic life. That's Absolutely. the life we That's should living. be striving to live. That's living. But no one ever goes, man. I want I want that Jokic vibe that where I Jokic just mentality. Like, That's what I like, think every day, guys. I think that every day. How can I make more and work less? I think that every day. The uh, Bill Simmons had a great analogy for Shaq. I, this is one of his. He's actually hit this one out the park. He said Shaq was like somebody that was like really, really smart, really, really smart. And if they maxed their potential, they could have been a four-two student in college, mm -hmm. right? But Shaq was like. Why be a four two student when I can be a three six student and have and go to parties and have mm -hmm. fun and do all this other stuff? And that's what he said. Like Shaq could have been by far the greatest player to ever play, but he's mm -hmm. like, I want to rap, I want to have fun. I'm a celebrity. Mm -hmm. I want to. I got money. Like mm -hmm. I can win championships and be o and be and have fun as opposed to winning nine and having no fun. Right. And I was like, that's pretty spot on. Yeah, and I think as fans, we should kind of keep that in mind when we criticize players for not being like 
the top 5% of athletes who all they do is think about getting better every single day. And we want them to care about every single possession and we want them to care about every single game. And we want them to be a winning player. But ultimately these dudes have like $400 million and they're 25 years old and they're successful and attractive and at the peak of their powers. Probably sometimes they let go of the rope a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even if you're not attractive, you still have that $400 million. Andrew Wiggins. Ain't no such. Oh, hey, no, hey, hey! Don't do that. To hey, don't wait do a second. Uh, don't, don't do all that. that. Yeah, don't do that. To I was, I was going to drop the Jay Z line. Ain't no, th- you know, ain't no such thing as an ugly billionaire. I'm cute, but man, I thought about. It. He uh, did get cuter. Jay Z got cuter. He got his long hair. He got Beyonce. Here's the thing I want to ask you guys. This is a, I never thought about asking you this until right now. Do you think the attractiveness of someone's partner? makes that person more attractive um it probably does for women like if if an ugly dude is with a beautiful woman the woman on the outside will look at the man more attractive yes say the other part then well i don't think <laughs> no i don't because i don't think we care one way or the other on the other side like, yeah i don't, I don't, I don't think, think it has i think you're effect. right like, yeah, I yeah. think you're absolutely right. You're like, but dang, the- he bagged Beyonce. What's he going? What's going on over there? Right, right. It, like, it, it yeah, makes some more. He's got. I see. It. He's got a little. Like, his skin's looking. You good. start rationalizing <laughs> it, like, oh yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, he can dress. He's like a good rapper. He's yeah. I'm sure that like a lot of redeeming. Yeah, you start to rationalize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like Jack Harlow, you know, Jack Harlow is like not no. good, like attractive, but you're like good smile, you know, like very charismatic. Eyes. And the yeah. more, yeah, hot, the more successful you get too, then they like get that swag. They're like, I've got a lot of money swag, not to be confused with real confidence, but sometimes you get confused and then they walk around and they've got it. And you're like, oh, they've got that confidence is attractive. Oh yeah. They think they can just come up to me and you try can't to buy confidence. Yeah, just to you can absolutely buy hey, confidence. It's 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 like uh, the age old um, uh, thing that the people say: you're not ugly, you're just broke. Fact. Lived it. <laughs> Facts. I know these two hundred and thirty dollar <laughs> eyelash extensions say exactly that. See, there you go. I need to start getting. I need to get them bags under my eyes taken out. Go pay two hundred fifty dollars to do that. I saw Demar Hamlin was wearing uh, one of those uh, eye patches. I saw it on that GQ thing. He had his, and he says he wears them uh, for 10 minutes every day. Okay. Yeah. Well, shout out to Mar Hamlin. New leader. Um, in a attempt to get us back to the NBA, <laughs> um, who's the ugliest? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you mentioned. Uh, <laughs> okay. Stop it. Eric Williams. Stop it. Both of you. Sam Cassell. You talk. <laughs> how do you get Jennifer? That was a crazy part. Well, we know how. But how um, we talk about ugly basketball, you mentioned the Milwaukee Bucks a minute ago. Kings, you know, they got blown out at home by the Pelicans the other night. They've lost to Charlotte in recent weeks. They've lost to your uh, Portland Trailblazers in recent weeks. And you talked about, you know, and Kenny and I were talking about the Bucks earlier, losing four out of their last five. They're playing ugly. Is that for both of those teams? Is that just the ebbs and flows of a season? Or... Should fan bases be concerned? Should should Kings fans be? Kings fans are definitely be they're definitely concerned right now. Should they be? Bucks title contenders should they be concerned? Kings fans shouldn't be concerned because you've played really good basketball against everyone except for the New Orleans Pelicans, pretty much. So I mean, maybe they just have your number. Maybe it's like the Cincinnati well, Bengals oh, versus the Bills. Like the Cincinnati Bengals just beat the Bills anytime they play them. Doesn't matter who's in, who's out, where they're playing. They're going to beat that ass, and that's what it is. And that feels like what the Pelicans are right now, and maybe it's just a bad matchup. And C.J. McCollum came out and said this too. He said, I always have a little something extra for the Kings because they told me that they were going to draft me, and then they didn't. No, so there's be. that. Well, there's that. There's a lot. There, that's a long list of people. <laughs> yeah. That's a long list of players. Yeah, that, that's that's just literally not there yeah. anymore, C.J. It's damn near a Hall of Fame team that could beat the King's ass for doing that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Headed by your boy. Your boy is probably yeah. at the top of that list. T-Rob. Yeah. Taking T-Rob was 
was okay. we, like we know what happened. We don't need to. Yeah, it was absolutely in in inciting. But I think for the Bucks fans, when it's not just the fact that the Bucks are playing ugly, it's the fact that Giannis is making these comments. Like Giannis is concerned, right? Giannis thinks that the guy that's washing the uniforms could do his job better, right? Like that's what he said. Every single part of this whole machine needs to get better. Not just our coaching and our players, but even the dude washing my jersey still needs work. And so that would give me great pause. No pause intended. Just great reservations. Yeah. The defense, we know it's bad, but offensively it's clunky too at times. Dame hasn't looked right. And I firmly believe, I firmly stand by what I said when he walked down the middle of the street with both twins in hand for his coronation ceremony, going down whatever street in Milwaukee that was. He's not happy. He does not want to be here. It's a good basketball situation. Terrible life situation. He does not want to be in Milwaukee. He wants to be in, in Miami. And you can see it. His eyes just, and he's got stuff, personal stuff going on. His eyes just don't, you know, when you see the sparkle, no sparkle. Well, they're all stuck with each other. So they need to figure it out. So that's what's going on with that. Hey, can I go a you little? Like my boss. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> can I go? Can I go a little off script with TK? Because we we talk. as long as you have to follow that remark and not me. <laughs> so you go ahead. We talk. We talk NBA because uh, this is an NBA savant. When you talk about Tristan Quick, but she knows other sports, and it is NFL wild, super wild, super wild card right. weekend. What you think? I mean, what what you, what you seeing? Do you, do you see? Do you believe in Buffalo? Um, are the Eagles really finished? Like we all know they are. Dallas, like what, what you see, Detroit uh, Rams, who wins that game? What, what you thinking about Wild Card Weekend? So I actually, in terms of Detroit Rams, I like the Rams in that spot, three and a half. I think I'm the Rams. The one. I'm the only one that likes Detroit. I think Detroit's winning that game. Do you? I'm a, I'm a one-man wolf pack. Yeah, Stafford back in Ford Field. The narratives are there. You've got Kyron Williams. And like, the Rams in general have been an offensive powerhouse, not when just they have Cooper Cup and guys that they can throw deep to and guys that they can do these trick plays with. It's when they can run the damn ball. Like they have to be scary on the ground in order to be doing that trickery. And Kyron Williams is absolutely elite at that, especially since he's come back from injury. He's been really good. So I like how that offense is flowing. Puka is really good, obviously. We know that. He's going to win offensive rookie of the year most likely. And then you've got uh, on the defensive side, they've sort of figured things out. They still have Aaron Donald. So revenge spot for Matt Stafford. Obviously, Jared Goff, they both switched teams, so there's a lot of narratives there in general. But I kind of like the Rams as dogs, and I kind of like the Rams. And this is just a bet. I don't think it's – Actually, going to happen, but this is a good bet. I think Rams twenty to one to win the NFC is a good bet. It's not the craziest thing in the world, it really isn't. They might be the second best team in the NFC. Yeah, that was the team I thought was the scariest for San Francisco. I agree. And then in terms of the AFC, I like the Bills. I've been talking about it with Buffalo. I come on every Tuesday with them at four uh, Eastern mm -hmm. Standard Time. Go on WGR if you guys want to hear it. Anyway, so they <laughs> like openly acknowledging you cheat on us. That's how I see it. Now I know. <laughs> You do these I, other kids. I know what we signed up for, <laughs> but I thought you were going to become I a housewife. You at some weren't point. a monogamist. I, like, I, do I, you I, have I, to tell I, me? I thought you were going to be a housewife at some point. Really quickly, as a side, really fast, because I, I need, <laughs> I need to get, I need to get this question out. I was listening to Drew Hill the other night, oh. and the song "Sleeping in My Bed" yeah. came on yeah. the radio. Is that like the cardinal sin? If you're cheating on somebody and you let that person sleep in your man or girl's bed, they not just like smash in the bed, somebody smashing in my bed. You let them have post-coital naps. Is that, that, is is that like the cardinal sin? No, nah, both of them are. But yeah, both crazy. of them. Yeah, yeah both of them. Yeah. Like, we don't do nothing in my bed. If you don't do something like we, I might be able to work through it. You know, we might be able to work. Don't, yeah, don't do it in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The house is bad holiday. too. You better go to but the, the sleeping, the sleeping is really the, bad. There, there's a level of intimacy to sleeping. Like that's not just a quick. <laughs> that's just not a that quick is, hit. It's really like I don't care. Yeah, like, I don't care about you. Yeah, 
Swear. You guys are starting to get to a place of like actual emotional connection. If you are allowing one another to fall asleep, you're most vulnerable, naked and asleep. That's the most cardinal that it gets, I think. All that to say, I like the Bills. Well, that's Trista Crick. You can catch her every week here uh, with D'Lo and KC. Uh, you and could also right after yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. That's, wow. What is Memphis? Wow. What is Memphis? Do you just come home to us? You're just running yeah, around. Yeah, I you think that's what it is. Us? Yeah, you guys are the last slot of the Tuesday. Like, this is me. I'm coming home. I'm coming no, home. No, it's not They're that. They're just appetizers. You guys are the full meal. You're not, well, there's probably a lot wrong with what you just said, but you're not sleeping in Buffalo or Memphis. Just to no. be clear. Okay. No. All right. So you did take a trip to Buffalo. I think we tried to back. face I'm going you. again next week. If they wow. went, if wow. they went. Wow. 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 Well, okay. Back well, here. there you have it. That, that's where Sacramento ranks on the pecking 